And as a former union organiser in Newpy, now part of Unison, I fully understand the importance of unions at the workplace defending people's rights, standing up for their members, and that's why I don't appreciate what this government is trying to do to shackle unions in the trade union bill they're bringing forward on Monday. Our campaign, our campaign attracted the support of 16,000 volunteers all over the country organisers in each part of the country that organised all the events and meetings that we have held. And in total, we've done 99 of those events. Today is the century. And we are here um, at the end of this very long campaign. And it's been quite incredible, the numbers of people that have come forward to join our party. But before I go on to that, I want to just say a big thank you. They all know who they are. To my many personal friends, many people, everyone in Islington North Labour Party for electing me to Parliament eight times up until May of this year. Their fantastic comradeship, friendship and support. It's been quite amazing and I absolutely value their advice. Sometimes it's advice you don't always want to receive, but that's the best advice you get. And I say thank you to all of them in Islington North. I also say a huge thank you to all of my widest family, all of them, because they've been through the most appalling levels of abuse from some of our media over the past three months. It's been intrusive, it's been abusive, it's been simply wrong. And I say to, I say to journalists, attack public political figures, say, make criticism of them, that's okay, that is what politics is about. But please, don't attack people who didn't ask to be put in the limelight, merely want to get on with their lives, leave them alone, leave them alone in all circumstances. <laughs> during, during this amazing three months, our party has changed. We've grown enormously. We've grown enormously because of the hopes of so many ordinary people for a different Britain, a better, a better Britain, a more equal Britain, a more decent Britain. They're fed up with the inequality, the injustice, the unnecessary poverty. All those issues have brought people in, in a spirit of hope and optimism. So I say to the new members of the party, or those that have joined in as registered supporters or affiliated supporters, Welcome. Welcome to our party. Welcome to our movement. And I say to those returning, returning to the party who were in it before and felt disillusioned and went away, welcome back. Welcome back to your party. Welcome home. And as the media and maybe many of us simply didn't understand the views of many young people within our society. They had been written off as a non-political generation who was simply not interested, hence the relatively low turnout and low level of registration of young people in the last general election. They weren't. They're a very political generation that were turned off by the way in which politics was being conducted and not attracted or not interested to it, in it. We have to and must and must change that. So the fight back now of our party gathers speed and gathers pace. I'm delighted that Kezia Dugdale is here today, our leader in Scotland. We're all going to be campaigning in Scotland for Labour in Scotland with those great those great traditions, those great Labour traditions in Scotland. I thank Carwin Jones for his leadership and the way in which we're going to fight in Wales. And I congratulate them on ending the internal market in the health service in Wales, something we want to do in the rest of Britain. And I say congratulations to Marvin Rees, selected yesterday as our mayoral candidate for Bristol. We're all going to be down there, Marvin, helping you and supporting you to win Bristol. And to my friend Sadiq Khan, who's been elected 
as our mayoral candidate for London. Sadiq, we're going to be campaigning together. And we're going to be campaigning together, particularly on the crucial issue of housing in London. I am fed up with the social cleansing of London by this Tory government and its policies. We need... We need a Labour Mayor. We need a Labour Mayor in London who can ensure we do house everyone in London. We do end the sky-high rents. We do end the insecurity of those living in the private rented sector. We need a Labour Mayor to bring that about in this wonderful great city of London. And Sadiq's the man to do it. This week, the Tories will show what they're really made of. On Monday, they have the trade union bill designed to undermine even the ILO conventions and shackle democratic unions and destroy another element of democracy within our society. We have to oppose that. They're also pushing the welfare reform bill, which will bring such misery and poverty to so many of the poorest in our society. I want us as a movement to be proud, strong and able to stand up and say we want to live in a society where we don't pass by on the other side of those people rejected by an unfair welfare system. Instead we reach out to end the scourge of homelessness and desperation that so many people face in our society. We're strong enough and big enough and able to do that. That is what we're about. many, many issues we face and many people face desperation in other parts of the world and I think it's quite incredible the way the mood in Europe has changed over the past few weeks of understanding that people fleeing from wars they are the victims of wars, they are the generational victims of war, they're the intergenerational victims of war, end up in desperation, end up in terrible places, end up trying to gain a place of safety, end up trying to be, exercise their refugee rights. They're human beings just like you, just like me. Let's deal with the refugee crisis with humanity, with support, with help, with compassion, to try to help people who are trying to get to a place of safety, trying to help people who are stuck in refugee camps, but recognise going to war creates a legacy of bitterness and problems. Let us be a force for change in the world, a force for humanity in the world, a force for peace in the world, and a, a force that recognises we cannot go on like this with grotesque levels of global inequality, grotesque threats to our environment all around the world without the rich and powerful governments stepping up to the plate to make sure our world becomes safer and better and those people don't end up in poverty in refugee camps wasting their lives away when they could be contributing so much to the good of all of us on this planet. We are one world. Let that message go out today from this conference centre here in London. conclude by this. The Tories, the Tories have uh, used the economic crisis of 2008 to impose a terrible burden on the poorest people in this country. Those that have seen their wages frozen or cut, those that can't afford to even sustain themselves properly, those that rely on food banks to get by. It's not right, it's not necessary and it's got to change. We need an economic strategy, that improves people's lives, that expands our economy, that reaches out to care for everybody. You can't do that if at the same time you do nothing about grotesque levels of inequality within our society. We need to develop an economic policy that deals with those issues. And so our party is about justice, is about democracy, it is about the great traditions we walk on those that founded our party and our movement, those that stood up for human rights and justice, the right for women to vote, the right for others to vote. We stand here today because of their work. But we go forward now 
as a movement and a party, bigger than we've ever been for a very, very long time, stronger than we've ever been for a very long time, more determined than we've been for a very long time, to show to everyone that the objectives of our party are intact, our passion is intact, our demand for humanity is intact, and we as a party are going to reach out to everyone in this country to take us on that journey together so no one is left on the side. Everyone has a decent chance in life and a decent place within our society. That's what Labour was brought about to achieve. That is what we're going to achieve. This election campaign is, as we see here, about shaping our future. Our party is going to, I hope, become more inclusive, more involved, more democratic, and we're going to shape the future of everyone in this country in a way that I think will be remembered as something that is good for everyone, that brings about the justice that we all crave. And that is what brought us into this wonderful party and this wonderful movement ourselves. I say thank you to everyone for all their support, friendship and comradeship during this election process. And I say thank you in advance to us all working together to achieve great victories, okay. not just electorally for Labour, but emotionally for the whole of our society to show we don't have to be unequal. It doesn't have I to be unfair. Poverty isn't inevitable. Things can, and they will, change. Thank you very much. And a remarkable moment. Jeremy Corbyn, now leader of the Labour Party, a backbench MP for 32 years, now leading his party and voted for overwhelmingly, taking very nearly 60% of the vote, 59.5%, pushing Andy Burnham, who started this contest, the favourite, into second place, taking just 19% of the vote. A remarkable day and so much to discuss about what this means for Labour and the future of the party. As you see on the screen, the Shadow Health Minister, Jamie Reid, has already resigned that post following the election of Jeremy Corbyn. Let's get initial reaction while we stay with these pictures, hugging Tom Watson, the new deputy leader. Initial thoughts from our assistant political editor, Norman Smith. Goodness, Norman, the scale of that victory. Absolutely amazing. Jeremy Corbyn totally obliterated his rivals mathematically to win more than 50% when he got four candidates in the first round. is incredible, but he got nearly 60%. And what is politically important? He won in every section. Jeremy Corbyn has a massive mandate. He won nearly 49% in the first round of ordinary party members. He won 57% of uni members. But here's the really striking figure. Of those three pounds supporters, those people who are not party members but who just paid £3 who could vote, nearly 85% of them, 85% of them backed Jeremy Corbyn. They were a landslide for Jeremy Corbyn and that is what we have learnt about this contest. Jeremy Corbyn managed to reach out and galvanise people who were left-leaning but had lost faith in Labour. They were tired of Labour as austerity light, as just a pale imitation of the Tories. They wanted something different and much more radical and Jeremy Corbyn, who hoovered up their vote. Now, one thing follows from this. Those who think they can get rid of Jeremy Corbyn anytime soon are going to have to think again. Because Mr Corbyn did not just win this on the back of the three pound supporters. He won it across the board. He has a rock solid mandate, an unbelievable mandate. So for those, and I've spoken to people who say he will be gone by next summer, they now have to tread very, very carefully indeed. Also, Jane, other very significant thing in his speech, Jeremy Corbyn saying, I want this to be an inclusive party. I want us to reach out. Praising Andy Burnham for his passion for the NHS. Yvette Cooper for her stance on refugees. And Liz Kendall, the most Blairite of the candidates, saying, I admire her courage for standing up to her views. Now, that suggests Jeremy Corbyn knows he cannot govern as a hard left Labour leader. He has to reach out and the signal from what he said today is he is going to try and bring the different wings of the party in together. But an astonishing result, he has a mandate. Those who thought he would be gone anytime soon, think again.